Hi, my name is Autumn Baker and my special populations topic is on social media and the adverse effects it's brought upon teens. I specifically want to discuss my findings that came along with the symptoms of depression from the use of social media. Social media is truly everywhere. I cannot think of a population that is more manipulated, addicted, and controlled by social media technology than today's teenagers. The population most affected are those who happen to be of our generation, otherwise known as Generation Z. It is apparent that even older generations can understand the draw of social media and technology, as they make time to share, comment, and spend valuable minutes and hours with their quote-unquote friends on Facebook or Instagram. This is a special population who is being studied for the effect of social media use on their overall health. Studies are being conducted to prove that social media use has adverse effects on any person who spends a substantial amount of time on these sites. Many adverse feelings and symptoms are being presented in studies that show that they are far more common and prevalent due to our society's predisposition and time spent on social media. With almost every single person carrying a smartphone and other various technology options, it is making it very difficult for this population of young persons to avoid being drawn into social media and especially difficult to avoid the consequences of this technology that is consuming us. Facebook depression. This term was first coined in 2011, based on an article that talked about teen depression developing from Facebook and social media use. It was noted when this was first keyed that these adolescents who present this are at risk for social isolation. This term is still being used today and I believe that this can be applied to many other social media applications like Instagram, YouTube, Tumblr, and Twitter. In a study done by Journal of Adolescents, one study was looking at the way parents and their adolescent teens psychosocial adjustment to social media use. In this particular study, parents reported symptoms of attention issues, depression and anxiety symptoms, and hyperactivity or impulsivity. Adolescents reported more issues with the feelings of FOMO, or the fear of missing out. It was up for discussion and became a topic of debate as to whether teens were using social media to be connected to others, or was the fear of missing out being presented as not wanting to be isolated from others. In another study done by the American Academy of Pediatrics, the children and adolescents studied found that 50% of those in the study reported feeling addicted to their phones. In another study by, done by the researcher named Feinstein, it was found that college students were more likely to ruminate online, which therefore causes a higher risk of depression. Rumination is the act of focused attention on the symptoms of one's distress, on its possible causes and consequences, rather than its solutions according to the response styles theory. In a study done in 2017, researchers wanted to distinguish between the amount of time spent on Facebook and their subject's presentation of depressive symptoms. It was found through the study that those who had low quality friendships and used the internet other than for searching the web were more likely to be depressed or socially anxious. It was also evident that those with a higher amount of Facebook friends had higher cortisol levels. Another key issue with social media is the accessibility of cyberbullying. In the Crimes Against Children Research Center, it was found that 9% of children aged 10 to 17 reported being harassed online in the past year. This research was published in 2010. It is almost impossible to deny that this number has likely increased in the past nine years. Cyberbullying can be more specifically defined as an aggressive, intentional act or behavior that is carried out by a group or individual using electronic forms of contact repeatedly and over time against a victim who cannot easily defend him or herself. This can be incredibly detrimental for victims because there is no so safe place away from this kind of bullying. The bullies can do this at any time of day and do it anonymously. Studies have shown that those who bully and are victims of cyberbullying report higher levels of depression and lower self-esteem. It is also important to recognize that victims of cyberbullying are at higher risk of suicidal ideation and suicide attempts. Now, on to our discussion questions. Question number one. Are there any interventions that can be made other than mental health awareness to avoid depression brought on by social media? Question number two. If you are a parent who had a child presenting symptoms of depression, possibly brought on by social media, how would you monitor their activity online?